Hello my dear friends, you are on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 7th of May of 2023. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. As you know, the previous night the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation and the PMC Wagner have resolved all their conflicts, all the issues between these two organizations and the Russian sources are saying that during the night the Ministry of Defense gave guarantees to protect Wagner's flanks and give them unlimited ammunition. Sorovokin has been put in charge of overseeing this new ammunition pipeline as well as being assigned as Wagner's man within Ministry of Defense for interrupted communications. If you if you forgot uh, if you forgot who is Surovikin, he is the um, um, during the previous year somewhere at the beginning of August till the end of October he was in charge of special military operation and uh, with him the Russians start attacking the Ukrainian energy facilities. So as you can see currently the situation with. Uh, Wagner and the munition support has been resolved. And uh, the thing is, if you remember uh, who is Rovikin as well, if you remember Prigozhin a month or, or two months ago reported that when the Russians were preparing the plan of storming Bakhmut, uh, Surovikin and uh, Prigozhin were in charge of, the, of that operation. So currently these two guys took a decision to complete this mission and the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation took a decision to give such opportunity to Wagner to complete the things that they're starting. This is a very interesting update. But anyway, we understand and we know that there were no piece of information from the Russians that they took a decision not to send, uh, not to send the special force Ahmad that is under control of uh, Rahman um, of Kadyrov, the head of Chechnya. So basically, I believe that because of the fact that we don't have any other piece of information, I believe that we can move Kadyrov to Prigozhin and let's to uh, make to show this icon behind Prigozhin. So with this, we're saying that Kadyrov is behind Prigozhin and uh, currently uh, the Russians have already sent some reserves and reinforcements to Bakhmut in face of, uh, of a special unit Ahmad. And currently these two types of forces are going to complete the mission of storming of Bakhmut and also possibly these two forces are going to proceed and continue capturing the bridgehead in the vicinity of Bakhmut until they reach the channel between Chasov Yar and Bakhmut. Today also we have added another icon to this map and I'm talking about this icon in the middle of Ukraine. This is the icon of Kirill Budanov. Uh, if you don't know who is this person, Kirill Budanov is the head of the main directorate of intelligence. So he's 37 years old. He's a very young man as you can see and uh, uh, he, is, uh, he was He's been in this position since the beginning of the special military operation, even earlier. So imagine it yourself. So I believe that he was adopted in this position in a very young age. And it's very difficult to understand why. what is the reason of the adopting of such a young person in this uh, position. But we see that as a, a head of the main directorate of intelligence, he achieved a lot of uh, like things, a lot of when talking about the Ukrainian success in Ukrainian favor. And this person is responsible for killing the uh, the uh, blogger and influencer in St. Petersburg by the name of Vladimir Tatarsky. A few days ago, a day ago, he he was responsible for Terakt Nizhny Novgorod when he uh, tried to, uh, under when the operation under his, con his control, uh, the Ukrainians were trying to kill another influencer. Also, he is responsible this Budana for killing of Daria Dugin in Moscow in the last year. Also, this person, um, uh, this Kirill Budanov, is in responsible for the operation with Crimea Bridge. So this guy is very important for the Ukrainians and I believe that when talking about the Ukrainians if we're trying to make like unbiased map I believe that we need to add this person and he deserves to be followed on this map and his achievements in Ukrainian favor also needed to be added on this map as well as Prigozhin and Kadyrov from the Russian side because this is not leaders these are warriors they have another type of icon but anyway furthermore today this person was interviewed or these days this person was interviewed by the western media and he was asked the question whether he is um, has any connections to the terrorist attack on the territory of Russian Federation uh, about whether he has any connections with like a killing of those influencers and the, his answer was terrible uh, this person Kirill Budanov uh, told us that uh, I'm reading quotes it's like his words we killed Russians and we will kill them anywhere in the world so this is his words and 
as I told you a few videos ago, that I believe that this is the main target of the Russians because he's very powerful and he did a lot of damage for the Russians and the Russians' reputation. Now let's move to the ground and let's start discussing the situation in Ukraine on the ground. Very interesting updates are coming from the south. Uh, uh, there was a very interesting update and everything started yesterday in the evening. If you know the Poland, Poland sent their like intelligence aircraft to the to the bank or to the uh, Rom Romania, and this plane was flying, let's say, uh, along the uh, coast of the Black Sea uh, on the Romania, and uh, they were trying to discover, they were trying to make some intelligence work, and they were trying to get as much as possible information from the western bank of the from the western coast of Crimea, and the Russians uh, sent their own aircraft in this area su-35 and they were trying trying to let's say to capture the the polish poland aircraft and they were successful and they forced the ukraine aircraft to step back the poland aircraft to step back to fly away and right after that the ukrainians sent like 22 drones fire attack drones it was like a first time since the beginning of the special military operation when the ukrainians were using such a type of uh, tactics they sent like uh, 22 drones in direction of Sevastopol with one purpose to attack fuel depots to attack Russian fleet to suppress and stress Russian air defense but the Russians the Ministry of Defense of Russian Federation reported that as a result of air defense and let's say let's say some kind of radar defense and many radio defense and so on they managed to destroy every single drone some of them were destroyed by the air defense system some of them were captured by the Russians technologies Russian radio system techn technologies or something like like this so that attempt failed but anyway that was very dangerous and uh, that was like 22 drones i believe that it was some kind of test of new tactic from the ukrainian side i believe that they will increase the numbers of such attacks i believe that ukrainians are going to like to fix their tactic their strategy and they will make more and more attempts to get the russian fleet we'll see whether they're able to do this or not Another interesting update, so usually are coming from Bahmut itself. Uh, uh, if you remember yesterday, we discussed that as a result of fierce clashes, according to the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation, the Ukrainians lost just 185 soldiers. And we were talking about some kind of reducing of activity from the Russian side. We connected this situation with the fact that the Russians took a decision, Wagner's took a decision to leave Bahmut and there was where some kind of rotation was some kind of rotation process. But uh, today, the, all the issues with the Minister of Defense was resolved and the Russians uh, increased the pressure in this area. And today, the Minister of Defense reported that as a result of fierce clashes and fightings in this area, the Ukraine lost 340 soldiers, almost two times. The loss of Ukrainians increased in two times in comparison with the previous day. And as you can see, according to this map, the Russians are trying to develop and move in direction of the hospital in the south. And of course, they're trying to encircle the Ukrainian position that are currently located in the Olympic school and in the post office in this area, trying to attack as well in this direction. And as you can see from this map, uh, we understand that the Russians are trying to cut the Ukrainian forces at least in three parts. Uh, this uh, the Ukrainian force in this area have has been already cut in two parts. The first one is located on the uh, on the south below this line in the vicinity of the MiG-17 statue, and the second army, the second part of Ukrainian forces was located between Khromova and this western citadel. But currently the Russians are pushing along the Piramohi Street, this one, and and by taking control over let's uh, assume and let's like if the russians are able to take control over this blue cloud then they will be able to cut these forces on the north also in two parts and then we will see like three parts of the ukrainian forces in the western part of bahmut the southern one in the vicinity of the mig-17 statue the western one the central western one in the citadel and the weakest position of the ukrainians in the vicinity of Khromova. and the first of all the russians will try to encircle and destroy the ukrainian forces in the vicinity of Romova. Uh, this is about the situation and I believe that this, the Russians are able to achieve this progress within the next few days and even maybe before the 9th of May. Very interesting updates are coming from Citadel. Uh, the Ukrainians are publishing more and more videos from this area, from different parts of this town and the Russians are saying that uh, recently they have managed to capture 
and the Ukrainian officer from this area who has, let's say, tight connection with the situation in the citadel. And that person uh, told us that Ukrainians um, uh, have some plan how to do and how in if the situation is going to develop wrong way. Well, how, what, uh, what kind of tactic they can use f to evacuate from the Western Citadel. And uh, the Russians are saying that Ukrainians are keeping civilians in the basements of these buildings. There are a lot of civilians. I'm not saying about like uh, 10 thousands or more. I think that there are maybe thousand or maybe a few thousands of civilians are still uh, in the basements of the citadel and the Ukrainians are not allowing them to evacuate from this part of Bakhmut for one reason. As soon as they understand that the situation is terrible, they will release the civilians and under cover of civilians they will try to evacuate from the western part of Bakhmut in direction of Ivanovsk and Chesev Yar. Uh, it's up to you to believe or not this information. I believe, I see, as I see, this is uh, this um, tactic has some logic. We understand that the Russians, of course, they are not going to attack civilians while the, let's say, the evacuation process, because uh, all this situation will be captured and will be made a lot of video and photo in case if the Russians open fire. So this is the tactic of the Ukrainians. This, like, say plan B for them in case if everything goes too bad for the Ukrainians. So we'll see because I believe that this situ entire situation is going to be resolved very very soon on this front line. Also the Russians reported that during the previous 24 hours they made artillery and fire attacks in the direction of Bogdanov and Stupochki trying to pin down and to suppress the Ukrainian force in this area not to allow them to send more reserves and, re and reinforcements in the direction of let's say 0506 road and in the direction of Ivanovska. Um, these days, uh, during the previous 24 hours, some Ukrainian sources published a very interesting piece of information that hasn't found any confirmation from the Russian side or from the other um, Ukrainian resources that as a result of a small counter-offensive operation in this area, the Ukrainians managed to regain some positions, some trenches in this road and, part, part, and to unblock this area at least for a short period of time and that attack was made by the Belarusian nationalist forces. I, I'll repeat you that uh, neither of the map or any military expert have confirmed this information. Also from another unconfirmed information is that Ukrainians launched a small counter-offensive operation in direction of Vosikovka from Vosikovka in direction of Sak and Vansetti and as a result of that attack they managed to, let's say, develop their bridgehead. This inf we can find this information, piece of information and confirmation just on the Western Ukrainian sources. The Russians haven't talked and haven't mentioned this piece of update, this piece of information on any source, so it's up to you to believe or not, but I believe that we need to discuss this information and on the same un um, unconfirmed piece of news we can uh, we received from the coupons front line also as a result of some offensive short offensive operation the Ukrainians managed maybe to maintain their bridgehead in this area to develop a little bit but also the Russians are not saying anything about this and even haven't mentioned I believe that currently the Russian uh, the situation on the combat line and the situation with and uh, the uh, providing of information is very tough from the Russian side and if everything goes wrong they start publishing this information immediately I believe that all the these unconfirmed attacks is are some kind of speculation from the Ukrainian side before the greatest counter-offensive operation on the south. The Ukrainians are trying to warm the situation and to make some panic among the Russians and, or something like this. Very, very interesting updates are coming from the south, from the Zaporozhye area. Uh, there are no changes on the ground, just regular artillery duels on Zaporozhye and Kherson and so on. But the Russians are saying that today they start receiving updates from Zaporozhye itself. And as we discussed during the previous like phases of special military operation, it is very important to have a weapon, to get supply and support of weapon, to move their forces to the combat line. This is like the flags that, um, that are saying that soon something is going to happen. And during the previous week, we discussed a lot about like a redeployment of forces. Even if we take a look at the Western deployment map, we see that this map shows that Ukrainians is very close to the combat line. But there is one factor that we haven't uh, received or haven't mentioned yet until today, at least until today. The Russian sources are saying that currently in Zaporozhye, 
uh, there is some kind of information that are spread among civilians, among people, among organizations, and the Ukrainians started collecting blood in Zaporozhye. They're asking people, everybody who can, like uh, man, woman, no matter the, your type of blood, no matter the, your group of blood, they're asking everybody who can to come to the centers of blood collecting and to give as much as possible blood. And we understand that if this process uh, have start, has started, that means that the Ukrainians are going to launch this counteroffensive operation very soon. And the uh, this, um, according to this piece of information, uh, the like the uh, final date, the uh, deadline for this like process to collect as much as possible bl blood is on the 8th of May. So tomorrow is the final day, and after that, so like they're asking to to come exactly in this date. And I believe that after that, the Ukrainians may launch something or at least to begin everything according to this schedule and timing with the timings we discussed in the previous videos, that something great big is going to happen on the 9th of May. Very interesting update are coming from Kherson area. As you can see, according to this map uh, and according to every single map, we have uh, this area, the islands uh, between between the Kherson and Russian area or in the gray zone or under Russian control. But the thing is, mainly in the gray zone. But the thing is that the Russians, for example, today report about another attack using the missiles against the headquarters of, of a group of South, of you know, forces of the South. So, and one more time, uh, we we see the mentioning of this uh, command center and as we can see the Ukrainians as I understand the reality is that the Ukrainians managed to capture every single island in this area currently they have already redeployed a lot of boats they have maintained their bridgehead in this area and they managed to shorten the uh, position the um, uh, distance between the Ukrainian position and the Russians uh, positions on this let's say bank of Dnipro river so the Ukrainians are very close and I believe that it won't take much time to cross the rest of the territory and to start marine operation in this area so and this is not very good for the Russians because as I understand they don't control the entire situation in this area at least um, between the islands I hope that they control the situation along the bank of the river and they're ready to meet the enemy if they start any kind of marine operation in direction of the south we'll see and let's talk about other front lines and when talking about the Kupiansk and the Liman front line the losses of the Ukrainians are almost the same but a little bit bigger uh, in comparison with the previous days, the Russians are saying that as a result of artillery duels, mainly artillery duels, the Ukraine lost another 160 soldiers, 8 armored vehicles and 3 artillery systems, but without any changes on the ground. One more time, just as some Ukrainian sources are saying that they launched a small offensive or maybe requiem combat operation in the south of Alshani. And as a result of that unconfirmed piece of information, they managed to maintain and develop their bridgehead. But if you ask me, I believe that that was some kind of another operation, intelligence operation of Bogdanov uh, that we discussed to this person in the beginning of this video. And that's it for today. Military Summer Channel reminds you to condemn any violence in Ukraine. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Put your likes. Join my Patreon. And have a good day. Bye-bye.